Hey y'all, so today we're going to be talking about how to analyze a family pedigree. This is just one of the extra credit options for exam one. So what is a pedigree? We're going to need to understand a few terms. So when we talk about how to analyze it, we all know what I'm talking about. So just a general overview of what a pedigree is. It's a family tree that shows how a family is affected by a disease or a trait. Um, it shows, you know, who exhibits the trait and all that. The P generation is the top generation, so the very first line. Below the P generation, every sub subsequent line is the F1, F2, F3, all the way through FN generations. Um, circles will represent females. Squares will represent males. Um, if it's indicated by the key, the circle or square, then it says that that individual is actually affected by the trait. Horizontal lines show mating. Vertical lines show offspring. Um, and so if you have two vertical line, two horizontal lines that result in a vertical line, then those two people have mated and produced an offspring. And then we need to know that the founding family is the P generation and their direct descendants. And so this becomes a little bit more clear when we look at this example. So this is just a general pedigree example from exam one. Um, what we can see here is a circle represents a female, a square represents a male, um, this whole group right here not including this square, but this whole group right here represents founding family one. And then this whole group right here, not including this square, but everyone else in this part, represents founding family two. Um, as we said, the key will indicate who is affected by the trait. And so if they have vertical lines here, such as this individual or this individual, they're affected by trait one. If they have horizontal lines as shown by the key, we have this individual, this individual, this individual, this individual, there, um, and everyone else like them is affected by trait B. If they have both horizontal and vertical lines, such as this individual, they're um, affected by both traits. And so when we analyze um, a pedigree, we need to make a few assumptions. Um, unless otherwise stated, we understand that there's going to be complete penetrance, and so the individuals will be fully affected when the um, when he or she inherits one dominant allele if the it's a dominant trait or they'll be fully affected if they inherit two recessive alleles if it's a recessive trait. Additionally, we need to believe that it's rare in the population, which means that the individuals who marry into the family in the second or following generations will not be affected, and so that just helps us when we're doing analyses. Um, so five clues to uh, analyze a pedigree. If the trait is going to be dominant, then an unaffected individual can't have any of the alleles for the trait. If a trait is recessive, then an unaffected individual can have one recessive allele or no recessive alleles. If the disease is rare, it has to be rare, I'm sorry. Um, so no people who marry into the family can have the allele. So, um, that just, you have to make that assumption when considering pedigrees. And if the trait is X-linked, then a single allele will lead to a male being affected. That's because males are XY, and so he has uh, no masking allele. And then a father will give his X gene to his daughters only, while a mother will give her X genes to her sons and daughters. So if we're looking to figure out if it's a recessive trait, um, what we can see is an affected individual will uh, have to have... if it, a affected individual has two unaffected parents, then the trait is recessive. If we're looking at autosomal recessive, um, that's indicated if the affected individual is a founding daughter without affected parents. This method does not work if the affected individual is a founding son, um, but we'll talk about that. Later, um, X-linked recessive is indicated if the affected individual is a non-founding son without affected parents. So if we have an individual who is affected by the trait and both parents are not, then we know that it's a recessive, and those two ways are ways that we can determine if it's autosomal or X-linked. So if we're looking to see if patterns indicate dominance, um, so we need to see every affected non-founding family member has uh, an affected parent, then the trait has to be dominant. Um, it's autosomal dominance. If the affected individual is a son, of an affected non-founding father. This doesn't work if it's a non-founding daughter. Um, X-linked dominance is indicated if an affected male or an affected female produce only affected females <coughs> um, and unaffected males. So that means that if we have a, a guy and a girl mate, the guy who's mating 
has the trait, then he can only pass it on to his daughters. Um, the flip side of that is if the guy and the girl, um, if the girl is the one that's affected, then they're going to produce about half of their uh, sons will be affected and half of their daughters will be affected. And so when we're looking at the pedigree again, back from the beginning, um, let's look at trait A first. So we're looking at all the squares that are um, vertical lines in them. And so we're trying to see what's going on here. Um, so if we go find, say, this square right here, parents of this son are, um, the parents of this son are both unaffected, and so we know that it uh, has to be a recessive trait, and so that's pretty easy there. But then uh, when we're trying to determine if it's X-linked or autosomal, what we need to consider is the fact that this is a non-founding son without affected parents, and so that means that it has to be X-linked. Um, so it's a sex-linked recessive trait, is trait A. When we consider trait B, we need to go find someone who has the um, horizontal lines. And so, let's see, if we choose someone... So what we find here is that we have a son right here that is a non-founding son that exhibits the trait with a affected father but not an affected mother. And so what that tells us is that we have to um, have a autosomal dominant trait. So these are just a, a helpful analysis of pedigrees. So when we're working through these problems, we're able to quickly determine if a trait is dominant or recessive or autosomal or sex linked. If you have any more questions, feel free to look at the PowerPoint again or watch any part of this video, or you can uh, ask me or Professor Granda in class.